uh, the market with Gervinder. We're going to continue our topic on the Canadian real estate uh, in terms of where it's headed in terms of Ontario and Canada. We're going to talk about some of the updates on mortgage rates and what the Bank of Canada is thinking. We're also going to look at some of the rules that Ontario brought forward this year in terms of trying to curb uh, the price appreciation. And I'll talk about what it is, what it means, and, and, and a bit of it about my opinion as well, which I'll share with you. In addition to that, we'll talk about some of the data uh, in terms of what we're seeing in the market of, in terms of number of listings and obviously what the houses are selling for. Are they selling over uh, what they're listed for? So this is going to be a great amount of data. I hope you find this information helpful and you definitely want to stick around to the end as uh, we kind of get through this, talk about where the market is today, where it's heading. And my previous video was about what the early signs of a market slowdown is uh, and you can definitely check that out. I'll put it in my description below. Once again, I just want to put a reminder out there. I am a wealth management advisor. This is something I practice and preach. Uh, a bit of this is the data. Obviously, I'm going to show you a bit of this is my perspective and bias. So if you're looking for you know, some advice, I always suggest reach out to your you know, trusted advisor, financial advisor, you know, uh, someone that you trust. Uh, so take that into consideration uh, and let's kick it off as I, there's going to be three big uh, takeaways I want you to take away from this video and I hope you find it helpful. As we're going along, please share your comments, your likes, uh, you know, subscription. I love that if you're following and I'll continue to make these videos, uh, you know, as much as I can. So let's kick it off here. The first article here is by Rudders. It was, uh, you know, within the Yahoo Finance portal, which is investors expect Bank of Canada to shift to half percent point uh, rate hike. So the next rate hike uh, or the next announcement will be this month, so April the 13th. So be on the lookout for that. I'll definitely be bringing that information update live to you on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. So definitely follow me there as well. So let's kick it off here. As Canada's inflation outlook worsens, investors are betting the country's central bank will begin hiking its uh, interest rate in half uh, percentage point increments, with the first of the rarely used upside moves possibly coming as soon as uh, next month, which is April 13th. The money markets expect the Bank of Canada to raise rates between 200 to 225 basis points in the six remaining interest rate announcements for 2022. And that's up from their previous understanding or consensus, which was 140 basis point increase uh, in 2022. And this is before the job, uh, you know, the blockbuster employment uh, this month. So basis points, just think of them as percentages. So when you say 200 basis points, that means 2%. So let's take uh, let's take let's use example that the next six uh, meetings the Bank of Canada raises by two percent the their you know the overnight rate that will bring Prime to four point seven percent as of recording this video on April first Prime is at two point seven percent a two point uh, percent increase is drastic it's going to go to four point seven my opinion before we continue on to this is I think that's too aggressive I think Canadians have taken on much debt and mortgages and HELOCs and car loans in the last two years since the pandemic. So it seems aggressive to me and I hope they don't break something by going down this, this path. But obviously, you know, there's some of the smartest people in finance uh, in Canada, if not in the world. But I do take it with a grain of salt that, hey, that's very aggressive. Just continuing along here, the Bank of Canada needs to aggressively tighten policy to keep inflation expectations for the consumer and also for businesses well anchored, said Simon Harvey, head of FX analysis for Monex Europe and Monex Canada. Chances of a larger uh, size move on April 13 when the central bank will make its next interest rate announcement have climbed to 70% after the Bank of uh, Canada Deputy Governor Sharon uh, is it Kosiak, uh, said on Friday that the pace and magnitude of interest rate increases would be actively discussed at that meeting. Also, the federal uh, bank in the U.S. is also, you know, this, they're also expected to increase that 50 basis points uh, on their May uh, 3rd to 4th policy meeting. Again, it's going to be very aggressive. Let's see what happens, but I just want you to be prepared because it's going to affect Prime. If you're borrowing, if you're looking to get a mortgage, if you're looking to get a car loan, you're going to see this increase. And inflation definitely has a large play here because they want to control inflation. That's one of their biggest things, and they want to make sure job growth is strong. So this is just some of the factors. Now let's shift over to here to Ontario. So Ontario introduced some new you know, regulations, laws, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, I'll give you my opinion, but let's kick it off here. Ontario, home uh, to some of the country's hardest real estate markets, is introducing legislation it says will make it easier to buy a home. The province wants to crack down on speculators, protect buyers from predatory development practices, and get more homes built faster. 
The bill increases Ontario's foreign buyer tax from 15 to 20 percent. This was introduced earlier this week and expands it to all of Ontario just the, instead of just the Golden Horseshoe area. Rebates will be available to new permanent residents. As you know, since the pandemic, all regions of Ontario have seen a price appreciation. So that's definitely, you know, one of the tactics are increased by 5%, which is pretty late to the game in my opinion. But anyways, I'll continue along. Uh, fines will be doubled and licenses will be suspended to address cases that the province sees as unethical conduct by developers like canceling projects to increase the price of their units. We've definitely seen this in the marketplace and definitely something I strongly dislike. You know, you, the investor or the home purchaser put their money in, it sits there, and then the vendor says, oh, sorry, can't build it, give us more money. Like, come on. You gotta have a, you know, we've signed an agreement, you agree to this, so let's, you know, give me what I paid for. At any time an Ontario provides a deposit for a pre-construction project, if that project were to be properly cancelled, that they would not be losing their hard-earned money and would be able to earn interest at the Bank of Canada interest rates, said Ontario Consumer Services Minister Ross Romano during a news conference. So essentially a little bit of interest, you know, I think people don't really care about the interest, they want the home at the end of the day. Also, the province is also looking for ways to increase the middle, uh, the missing middle housing and increase density uh, as well as housing community or how community housing. So they want to densify much more uh, and definitely, you know, they're going to try to wield their power over the municipalities throughout Ontario. My opinion, my takeaway is, okay, great. Where was this, you know, a year ago? I don't think it's going to make much of a difference, to be honest. I am very glad to hear about the fines uh, for potential vendors canceling projects and then relisting at higher price that that is definitely you know not something uh, you know i'm a fan of and definitely you know i i think that was a good step but overall in terms of slowing down the market which or trying to correct the market i don't think this is going to have much of an impact now let's turn our attention to some of the data that we're seeing on the market after march break so this is from alex you can see he's a uh, this is a Twitter thread, so just a little bit about Alex if you're interested to follow him on Twitter. Coverage of the Canadian real estate market and macro data with a primary focus on the Toronto metropolitan area. Uh, and he has this data here, and I'll open up this chart just to show you. So GTA market weekly uh, update after a brief pause during the spring break. Active resale listings are you know shot up again. Uh, and there's a few of these individuals who are in the real estate industry, such as Nazem, Daniel, and we're definitely going to be looking at a thread here from Scott. Uh, you know, they're, they correctly identify this, you know, uh, a bit of long ago in terms of trying to set expectations for the market and are definitely very followed on Twitter. So if you're interested to learn more, definitely follow these individuals on Twitter because you'll definitely walk away from something. So what we're looking at here right now is a chart from January 2021 to March 2022 which is a total inventory of GTA resale residential listings on MLS, so for all housing types. You can see here the dip to January, this is probably the lowest, under 4,000. And you can see this number has steadily been increasing in terms of the supply in the market. And we're, not, we're now at about 10,000 active listings on MLS as of you know, March. You can see that this is obviously, you know, most likely will continue to trend higher. And you can see the high here last year around May, June, April, about 12,000 listings uh, on, on the MLS. So definitely supply is on the rise. I'm definitely seeing that when I'm driving around in the GTA. More open homes, more listings, and more, uh, you know, banners I see uh, on the side of the road. Say, hey, come check it out. There's this an open house here today. Now, continue along with this. This is a, a you know a Twitter thread by Scott Ingram. He's a data-driven uh, you know realtor. Uh, also, uh, I believe he's a Toronto. He's a chartered accountant. So I definitely love looking at his data. It's definitely not the first time I'm, I'm sharing this with you guys. So this is going to be very fascinating information. So weekly sold over list. So I find the share of 20% or more over asking is a real standout uh, one to track. For condos, it's only ever been about 10% of listings twice in two extreme periods. Can see it's dropped uh, quite a bit in the last two weeks, but still one in four. So listen, let me just open this up and tell you what this means. So this is the weekly percentage of, uh, weekly of 20, sold 20% over list price. So these are condos that were listed. And what is the percentage of them that list that sold greater than 20% of what they were asking for? 
So we can see here, this is for 2022. Uh, as uh, of earlier, you can see here in March, there were, you know, 31% of listings sold for greater than 20%, and we see that number decreasing to 23%. And obviously, here is a number from 2017, uh, was the last time we kind of had a bit of correction, how this number continued to dip lower, as less listings sold for less overpriced, definitely uh, less than 20% over listing. Continuing along here, we can see the pendulum is swinging in the freehold numbers as well now. Still almost half of the listings selling this way, so that is greater than 20% above listing price, which he is saying as well, which is ridiculous by the way. But again, looks to be, the pa looks to be past the peak for this activity in this cycle. So we can see here, this is for, this is for a few freehold homes in the 416. This blue line here is 2020, or sorry, 2022. And we can see the peak has happened here at 53, 54, 55% in, you know, from January to February. And in March, we can see this number slowing down here at 45%. So what does 45% mean? It, it means of the freehold homes listed in the 416, 45% of them sold greater than 20% over the listing uh, or asking price. And you see the expectation is most likely this number will crater because they're comparing it to 2017. You can see here in 2017, the peak here was for about 48%. And from the rest of there, the number continued to fall as spring, we passed spring, we went into summer, etc. So that is definitely telling you a lot. So this, you know, the market is changing. Obviously, it's not going to change overnight, but there are some signs here. Um, continuing along, just over three and four house sales are, you know, are still SOL, which is, you know, sold over listing. At least we are past the five weeks of being over 80%, but it's no walk in the park for buyers. Yesterday, I mentioned my buyers were one of six bidders, uh, which was better than nine or 10 early in the week. Uh, while well, two lates uh, entered were, uh, so was eight. So you can see there's less people obviously in the market to buy at this point. So that was the video, that was the data. Three things I want you to take away from today's video and I, and I hope it makes a difference, which is, you know, interest rates, mortgage rates are definitely on the rise. The question really now is how far are they gonna go, how fast are they go, and how aggressive are they gonna be? And that's gonna affect inflation, our housing affordability, and, and prices of financial assets. The second is, you know, obviously, you know, there's some elections around the corner, definitely in Ontario. And, and you know, we'll see what the Liberal government does as well with their announcement next week with, uh, with the federal budget. So, you know, municipalities, provincially and, and federally, there's going to be some changes. So this is just the start of maybe a few others to come. Third, um, or secondly, I should say the in terms of supply, we're seeing supply definitely increase. So there's going to be more supply in the market. So if you're a buyer, you know, you're going to have an opportunity to see more and, you know, kind of make a, a bet in terms of what you want to buy. From a seller's perspective, you know, you're going to have more competition to sell your home. And lastly, if you're in the, you know, you've been waiting to get into the right time, you're like, you know, things are going to correct. Right now, things are correcting, obviously not by the greatest degree, but there's still houses and, and condos or all types of homes selling above their listing price. So if that continues to happen or this number continues to increase, it's going to, again, be a seller's market, not a buyer's market. So I hope you found this information helpful. Uh, you know, I, I, I will continue to bring this information to you on a weekly basis, Try even more. If you want more information, definitely follow me on Twitter or Instagram. I, I always post there as well. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you dislike it, you know, give me a thumbs down as well. But give me some comments as well. Why do you feel I can improve upon or what did you like about this video? And of course, I appreciate a subscription as I, I you know, I spend a lot of time into this and I want to bring you the right data so you can make uh, an informed decision. So if there's any questions, definitely reach out to me. I hope you have a great day, a great week, and you're doing well. Thank you so much for taking the time.